Hey, I'm Max, and I've been making games for fun for many years now. I've only made small single-player games because that's what I enjoyed the most. However, recently, I've found that most of my game's ideas are very boring because winning against AIs doesn't really feel good unless the game design is amazing, which honestly, mine is not. So I decided to make my first multiplayer game because everyone knows that games are more fun when you can play with or against friends or other players. At that point, I had nearly no knowledge of how to make a multiplayer game, so I did a bit of research. I first looked into ways to add multiplayer to Unity or Unreal games, and there are a lot of ways, but most of them I didn't really like or they looked too complicated for a first game. I thought maybe a good first for multiplayer would be a website, since the browser already handles all of the connections between the client and the server. But I knew nothing about web development. So I did like I always do when I face something that I don't know, I googled and followed tutorials on YouTube. By doing this I learned very quickly HTML, CSS and JavaScript, and I made a few projects to practice them. Then I looked into how to make the player communicate with the server because that is the base of multiplayer games. You want the player to be able to communicate with the server and the other way around. I found out about PHP and gave it a try and well it works but for games that's not very good because it only allows the client to send a request to the server and not the other way around. It's also not very good for fast communication and a game needs to send and receive data very often. So I researched a bit more and I found out about a thing called Node.js which somehow lets you run JavaScript as a server. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea how it works but after following a few tutorials, I got it working. I made a simple server that writes data to a file and when I start the server, the file is created. I then used a package called socket.io to create a connection between the player and the server and to allow me to send messages often between the two. Using socket.io, I can see my socket ID being printed in the client console and also in the server console, showing the connection between the two. I can also input and send a username and a password, make the server receive it and add it to a list in a file. At this point, I felt confident to make my first game attempt even though I had been doing web dev for only two days and multiplayer for only a few hours. I didn't even use any engine or anything, I just put the images in the HTML and changed the style to move them. At first, I made all of the players connect and control the same image, but obviously that's not the goal when making a multiplayer game. I also had bugs like each browser having its own position, so when I switched between them, the target snapped. But I just kept working on it throughout the day and finally got multiple images spawning and also every browser seeing a new image spawn when another player is connected. Each player moves their own image and I even managed to handle removing images on disconnect, which was honestly harder than it sounds. Adding and removing HTML elements to create objects in the game was not very efficient and also very difficult to handle. The input system was also pretty bad and it didn't allow multiple keys to be pressed at once. So this was obviously not a realistic way to make a game. I searched a bit for engines and I found that there are a ton of engines for JavaScript. But the one that seemed to fit my needs the most was called Pixie.js. It was very interesting to me because it's very simple and it has a lot of documentation and examples. Which was good for me because I still barely knew JavaScript. I messed around with it and the examples until I got the hang of it. Then I tried making a small game with it and it went pretty well. Once I understood the engine enough, I added the server stuff to it and tried to sync the game on all of the connected players. It was not perfect, but it was decent. I think the bugs were mainly caused because I was doing pretty much everything on the server, even moving the objects. And so I think maybe there were too many packets and something wrong was happening there, or maybe I just messed up my code. So then I tried making another game, but this time I let the client handle a lot more things like moving the objects, and instead only made the server transfer data. So instead of having the player click, the server spawn a bullet, then send a message to all of the clients to spawn one too, 
and then make the server move it like 50 times a second and update each client with the new position every time it updates. Instead of that, now the player clicks, the server tells every other client that that player clicked and that's it for the server. Then every client spawns its own bullet and moves its own bullet. The cool thing about this is that the server doesn't handle as many things, so there's less chance for bugs. And also I guess the server doesn't use as much power. But the downside is that they might not be 100% in sync. So some players with more lags might see the bullets a bit behind the other ones. And also if I add a collision and damage, it might be hard for the server to know which messages to trust or not. So if a player says I hit that other player but it's actually lagging and the other one says no I did not get hit, which client do you trust? Do you remove the HP or not? So that's kind of a tricky thing if you use the client to calculate trajectory and hit. But this is just me playing so it doesn't matter. Also the more things are handled by the client instead of the server, the more players can cheat. If the HP of the player is stored on the server, then no cheat can change it. Unless they have access to the server, they cannot change it. But if each client keeps track of its own HP, then it's very easy for the player to open the console and change it. So I guess balancing between client and server side data and functions is a part of the job when you make multiplayer games. You don't want to make your server laggy, but you also don't want to allow the cheats or the lag of the player to ruin the game. That's all for this video, but my next video will also be about multiplayer. But in the next one, I will try making an async multiplayer game where you fight against other players, but not in real time. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe.